Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have you just have stepped into, into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Tickets get the game about to start. Yeah. So we were talking about uh that that second move, right? Yeah, the second move was uh was kind of crazy. It was down in down the soul in the hole. Mm-hmm. Uh Boogs was coming down on the break. And I can't remember who the guard was, but the guard tried to play some D on him. And Boogs hit him with a crossover. You know. And sold in the hole, you know how that ground is. You gotta yep. be careful on that ground. That's right. You got a little, you got a little, you got a little slope in it. Yeah, I, I've <laughs> never seen nobody. I've never seen. Well, I've seen very few people with a string on the ball like Bugs. Right. So Bugs, Bugs hit this cat with a crossover, and fractured his ankle. <laughs> Dude had the, the real meaning of breaking court. ankles. The real meaning of breaking yeah. ankles. Literally broke his ankle. Wow. It was crazy. He hopped right off the court. Ah, ah, ah. Because there's that, little, there's that little slope right there on the court, right? Mm -hmm. And, and if you don't know that spot, right. you get caught, yeah. Yes, yes. So those are those are two crazy moves that come immediately to mind. What was it like playing with Booker? Man, Boogs made the game so easy. You know, all you had to do was get him the ball and run. That's pretty much all you had to do. So since I love rebounding, you know, me, like I said, Big Kev, Bezo, we were all fighting for rebounds. Get him the ball and run. Whoever he saw first, that's who got the ball. And like I said, for a guy his size, you know, 5'7", five, 5'8", 150, 160 pounds. And he's he's wrapping passes around six five, six eight dudes, like they're not even there. And mm. the passes were always on time. Always on time. A lot of times, if you wasn't looking, you get hit in the back of your head or you get hit in your stomach because the passes were right there. Because, like I said, at that time. Boogs wasn't in the scoring. He was a distributor. He got everybody right. else into the game. Right. So all you had to do was get to your spot, get open, and he'll figure out a way to get it to you. Isn't that crazy how someone becomes a legend by making everyone else better? Listen. That tells you about the game of basketball. Yes, that's, that's what true legends do. That's what true legends do. You make everybody around you better. My guy too said it was Fig. It was Fig who uh that fractured his ankle. That's what it was Fig. Yeah, it was Fig. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know those guys. Trivia his, history, historic trivia question right there. Right. Right. Because I would have never figured that out. <clears throat> Two of the most Brooklyn Soul acts. So this is your last question, Brooklyn Soul. I don't want to stump you, but if you got more, keep asking, brother. I ain't not. All right. Hi, outside, up, of Rucker, outside of Rucker, outside of Rucker, two of the most competitive tournaments you played in. Outside of Rucker. Um, it would probably have to be Soul in the Hole, definitely. Yes. And... I'll take it. I'll take it outside of Brooklyn because I don't want to give Brooklyn all the props. Right. I'll take it outside of Brooklyn and I'll say uh, Dykeman. Dykeman. Uh, Dykeman's still going strong today too. So yeah. 
Yeah, Dyke was still going strong. There was a there was a Dominican league I used to play in back in the day of town called Peligro. You know, a lot of a lot of Dominican uh, pride. Yo, that, that Dominican pride team was was tough, man. Oh, Dominican pride was a problem. Yes, they were a problem. Need to figure out who yeah. who was the guy. Who who was the guy? We need to figure out who was the guy up there, and, and get them on because. I've always heard about these guys, you know, and I went and watched these guys play, and I was like, this is one of the most well-put-together teams and organized, and they love to play with each other. You could tell that these guys came up with each other. Yeah, man. Dominican pride from first guy to the last guy. They can all ball. Yeah. They can all ball, man. And I, played, I played against them maybe two or three times, and Wars. It was wars. Right. Right. You know, but once again, at the end of the day, the respect and the love was always there. So how did you how did you become a part of AM1 and this transition in your life? Um playing up in Rucker, you know, like I said, uh Maine and Shane, they were putting together games out outside of New York prior to AM1. So they were traveling already. Mm. When I came, when I, when I started playing at Rucker, and me and Maine got tight, and I met Shane, and we all got tight, you know, they asked me to start going on the road with them. So they were going on the road before me and Ann won, and then when I joined up with them, I was going on the road with them. So we were all having games out of town prior to even knowing Ann won even existed. So then uh, Maine had went out of town, and he had a game somewhere down south, I think it was in Virginia. And and one was an upstart company at the time. And they I, they sponsored the game. They came there to they came there to see somebody else. I think it was Black Widow. Rest in peace. Okay. Black Widow. I think it was Black Widow they were coming to see, but he didn't he couldn't make it. So Maine had a crazy game and they wanted to do something with main event. So he came back up to Rucker. They were talking to him. They were talking to Headache. And Headache came to me and said the Ann one was talking to him about something. Then Maine came to me and said, you know, something's about to go down with Ann one. Uh -huh. they, uh, they want to sign some guys to help promote their merchandise. So we ended up, you know, meeting with some of the guys from Ann one small little room, a few of the players, myself, Shane, Maine, Aircraft, Future, uh, Lord Finesse was there. Shout out to Lord Finesse. <laughs> the legend. Me. Uh, yeah, set free. And we signed our first contract. We signed a five-game deal for five, a four-game deal for 5000 Wow. Right. And that was the footage you see on the first mixtape. So, you know, from there, I didn't, I had no idea what it was going to turn into. I was just happy I was playing ball with my boys and, you know, right. getting some money on the side, some free gear. And then next thing you know, after the footage with Skip came out, after that, you know, they were selling the sneakers with the tape. Right. That footage, that footage just put everything over the top. Definitely, definitely. That that was just like cracking the streets right there. Mm -hmm. So, so that was the main event for me on for that one. Right. Yep. There's a, a video I put up today of your main event on fast break, uh, catching off the rebound dunk and breaking the backboard. Right. Yep. Yeah. Where was that at? That was in uh, that was in York, Pennsylvania. We were playing for a former WNBA NBA player. Her name was Chantel Tremitier. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you go back, you'll probably recognize her because she's probably one of the more indistinguishable people in, in the WNBA when it was first starting up. She she had blonde hair, you know, her hair stuck out a little bit, hell of a player, great defender, you know, and uh, she asked us to come out and play for 
you know, a charity game for her out in her hometown. You know, we developed a friendship with her. Mm -hmm. We went out there and played, and uh, we're on a break. I went up for a layup, came off soft. Main and I attacked it at the same time, and the rest was history. So y'all both grabbed the ball at the same time? We both grabbed it at the same time. But he grabbed, he grabbed it with one hand, and I grabbed it with one hand, and then our other hands went on the other side. And that was it. That was it. Now, I've seen one guy break the backboard before, but two guys at the same time. And I, you know, I watched it over and over. And I was like, did one guy just hang on the rim after the other guy dunked it? Nah, you guys caught it together and flushed that shit. So that shit was crazy. It was simultaneous. And the reason why, one of the reasons why it was simultaneous is because, you know, I played I play with Maine for a long time. There are few people I've played with that attack the rim like main event. So if you don't get to the rim first, you might not get the ball. Right, right. So what I really was trying to do was beat him to the rim. That's all I was really trying to do. And it just so happened that we got at the rim at the same time because we both had the same train of thought. We read the ball the same way. We both figured out it was coming off. And the anticipation was sim simultaneous. And since y'all both was up there at the same time, kind of, I, I think it kind of shocked both of y'all. And so when y'all hung on the rim, y'all was hanging on the rim for safety to make sure y'all come down all right. And then the whole right. shit collapsed. Right. And that, that's, that was the whole thing. We knew once we both met at the rim, neither one of us wanted to get hurt. So once again, simultaneous thought, we both grabbed the rim. Because I didn't want to fall on my back, and I know he didn't want to fall on his back. That's right. You know? Salute my artist in the building, J Jamel Powell. What up, what up, man? Salute, salute. For sure. I told him you, you, you're working on that uh, artwork for him, so I know you are. So how was your time spent like, over in, uh, in M1, and how was your experience? Was it a good experience? Well, I, had, I had a ball over in M1, man. I met a lot of good people over there, developed some long-term relationships. Got to travel the world, you know, travel the states, play against all types of competition. Um, got to hang out with my guys, doing what I love and getting paid for it. So, you know, overall, it was it was a great experience, great experience. You know, whereas I probably wouldn't have met half these guys if and one didn't come about. Do you think that run uh, made you a part of basketball history? I believe it should. I believe it should. Because uh, we we may not have changed the game, but we did remix it. You know, we, we did remix it. And for the eight years, the seven, eight years that I was there, that I was there, we were the top product in any town we went to. You know, whether it's here in the States, internationally, locally, you know, we had a TV show. Not many guys that didn't make it to the pros to play basketball can say that. You know, I right. was fortunate enough to be the, you know, I was fortunate enough to be the face of a video game. And then and one came out with their video game afterwards. So we, we brought. We brought a lot of guys into the spotlight where normally you might not have seen them. So, you know, we brought a, a lot of talent to the forefront because of what we did. You know, and on top of that, we were a hell of a basketball team. Yeah, definitely. A lot of talent. So, yeah, I would, I would say definitely I think we, we should – To, to, to back up my man Shane the Dribbling Machine because he's been pushing that. He's been lighting that torch for the past few months now, if not a year or so. So I'm just going to say what my man Shane the Dribbling Machine has been saying because I agree with him 
I believe we should get strong consideration for possibly being inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. You know, because early on we had Harlem Globetrotters, right? And, mm -hmm. and you know, totally different styles of games, but the Harlem Globetrotters had an impact on the culture, right? And now yes. 50 years later, some odd years later, and one does the same thing. Remember, we were just talking about the skip tape that was just like cracking the street. And then you guys, and then uh, y'all hit the street, uh, the circus all around the country, different cities. Then you guys land on television. Some of the same thing that the Harlem Globetrotters did. Right. You know, uh, uh, too bad we're not in the cartoon days because you guys might have the cartoon too. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Never know. You never know. I was. It's funny you say that because I had a, a friend of mine a few years back. He wanted to do an animation short for the And One guys. He wanted to do an animation wow. short on his website. So I, I might scrape the dust off of that and reach out to him to see if he's still interested in doing that. But um, look, brother. You know, to you too. Once that happens, right? The same path, man. And yes. I, you know. Again, never thought about it, but now that you put it out there, yeah, I think that that should happen because you guys impacted the culture, you know? Yes. And, and I think anybody who puts the time in and has an impact on a culture, especially here in America, uh, that should go down forever and should never be forgotten. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. No doubt. No so, doubt. You know, I, I hear I hear to this day, you know, I see guys, you know, when I'm wherever I'm going, I see guys, yo, man, I used to watch you guys all the time. You know, I hear guys say, yo, you kept me off the street. Grown men, 35, that might have been 30, 35 at the time. Never played basketball. Watch the mixtapes. All of a sudden, they want to learn how to uh, play basketball just from right. watching the mixtapes. Yeah. You know, these are grown men who went their whole life without even thinking about touching the basketball and watching a mixtape or watching the TV show that we had put a fire in them to want to learn how to play basketball. Kept a lot of kids out of trouble because they had to come in on Friday night if they wanted to watch the TV show. So you're coming in the house, you can't get into too much trouble in the house, you know? And you know, a lot of guys might've said, you know, we ruined the game. Highly disagree. Because that's what you were paying attention to, you know, with the, you know, the, the trick moves. You know, people talk about a lot about the trick moves, and maybe some of our stuff was choreographed. None of our stuff was ever choreographed, ever. Right. There was no script to what we did. Right. One of my one of my biggest uh, things. With M one, and I don't think it was with M one. I think it was with everyone else trying to emulate M one, right? And I think that uh, what some of the people may may have said, because I had those thoughts. And you go play in different tournaments, and you see dudes trying to play basketball just to get a name, right? Because you guys that solidified yourself. But again, a lot of people always see the finished product; they don't see the work that goes into putting you know, that game together like that. And where right. as you right. guys make it look easy, of course it looks choreographed to some Gee, people who don't know. Right? To, to some people who don't know. know. So Yes sir. But once everything is put together and the final product is put out there, uh and you guys own individual accolades show that you guys can hold it down in your own. Mm -hmm. So when I saw people started to, to do that and emulate and try to copy the game, that's when I had uh, my disagreements with it. But it wasn't towards you guys, because I know the work that you guys put in. I played with a lot of you guys when, you know, you guys are younger. Uh, so, and, and I watch a lot of you guys. So, right. and this is probably a lot of people who was hating from afar, you know? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, with, with success, you're gonna you're gonna get that because you can't please everybody. Right. So if you try to please if you try to please anybody, if you try to please everybody, you're not gonna please anybody. 
So that's you, right. You just have to you just have to try to do what you have to do and hope that the people who admire you are the people that are in the forefront because those are the people whose opinions you're gonna value. You know, yeah. I appreciate what you just said. You know, and you know, just to you know, capitalize on what you were saying, when people thought a lot of our stuff was choreographed or not real, that was one of the main reasons for us doing our crash the courts. Mm. Going into any neighborhood, playing against guys that, you know, that think they can hang with us. And listen, we just show you the play. That's why we with the King Dome, total package played in that game. We when we played the King Dome, we went down to Berry Farms. We played uh, uh, at Tri-State. You know, we played in a, in a lot of the major tournaments in New York City just to show cats that, yeah, we there's an entertainment aspect to what we do. But don't get it twisted. We can play ball. And a lot of the guys we were playing against, I've played against already. So I know they weren't thinking of me like that. They were just thinking about and one as a whole like that. Did you guys win any tournaments together in the, up here in New York or anywhere else? In and one, well, and we didn't we didn't play any 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 tournaments. We just played in like one day games. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. I got you. So, where's some of the best basketball that you've seen across the country, like in different cities and states? Um, I gotta say, DC, B more area. Got some ballers down there, man. Yeah. One of my favorite guys. DMV area. Crazy. One of my well, two of my guys, three of my guys that were on the team, but I also am a fan of watching them play. Baby Shaq, Prime Objective, and Silk. Three of the toughest guys you want to you you ever want to play against. Mm. You know? So Baltimore area, uh Detroit, they got ballers. You know, um, quiet as kept. H Town, Houston, they got some ballers. Um, Georgia, Carolinas, they always got some ballers somewhere. Out west, you want to go Cali without question. They keep ballers out there. Chi Town, they just be falling out the trees in Chi Town, the ballers. <laughs> <laughs> they, they everywhere in Chi Town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minnesota on the low got ball players too on the low mm. Minnesota. Mm. You know? Right. So you got to you got to be careful, man, because it's it's pockets all across the country where if you caught slipping, you are gonna get your ass bust. That's right. That's right. So shout out to all them areas. So I, I remember uh, at one time you was working in the schools. Are you still in the schools? Not not at this time. Yeah, I was a uh, assistant teacher in the New York City educational system for about about eleven, twelve years. I did that, you know, while I, while playing for and one at the same time. So okay, okay, all right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I did that for a little more than a decade. I, I enjoyed working with the kids, special ed population. You know, I work with special ed kids. Yeah, that's you what know, I do. I, I work with special ed high school as well. Yeah. Yeah, so salute to all the teachers out there. Salute to you doing your thing. I it's definitely appreciate it, man. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, last couple of things before we wrap it up. Um, how are you? Are you still involved in the game in any aspect? Well, yeah, I, I still play. You know, I play in a lot of 40 and over tournaments in the city. Uh, past few years, I've went out to Philly and played in tournaments down there, won a championship down there maybe three or four years ago. Um, do do some background acting, slam dunk bookings. Shout out to slam dunk bookings and my manager, Susie. You know, she gets me work, you know, in terms of, you know, if any – Movie might have a athletic scene in it, or even right, it right. Have an athletic scene in it, and you know she might think I'm good for it. You know I do that. Um, I do some you know basketball training off and on, so I'm I'm definitely involved with the game still. What do you What do you want to be? Uh, 
remember for when it's all said and done? Um, just want to remember it as a you know guy that loved the game. He had a passion for the game. Whenever you saw him, you saw basketball at its best, at its purest. You know, the desire to want to be better. Somebody that never backed down from a challenge. And somebody who, you know, always played within himself, or at least tried to. You know, just a, you know, just a good guy. That's it. Hard-working good guy. Pat Alphonse says, Biz do a lot of commercials out here. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Me and Pat, me and Pat, we worked together in a couple of joints. Right, right. Yeah, but I ain't yeah. going to say nothing about you, Pat. When you, you disappeared on us back in the day with the Kenny Kings and you popping up in Mary J. Blige videos and all that. Like, Facts. Facts. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> right. Love you, Pat. Uh, Jesus Jesse said, who was the best overall baller on the squad other than Skip? Mm. Uh, I would probably, I can't pinpoint one guy, but there were a few. Um, Baby Shaq, incredible for, you know, he was a big guy, but he wasn't that tall. He's made about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, but Skills was incredible. Uh, once again, prime objective. You know, six seven, six eight, dribble the ball like a six foot guy. Mm. Shoot from almost anywhere on the, on the court. Um, there was another guy, Tony Jones. His nickname was Go Get It. Mm. Six eight or six nine. Nice smooth game. Jump out the gym. You know, if if he had. If he had a real fire under him, he was one of the few guys on that team that would have had a real shot at getting into the NBA. If he would have really put put his mind to it, because I was I was a big fan of, of his. Tony Jones, go get it. Um, a boy sick with it. If it wasn't for his badass knees, he was a hell of a player. Um. Yeah, that's about it. You know, Ali, Ali Mo, you know, my guys, all my guys had skills. All my New York guys had skills, you know. But, yeah, those those are the guys that were, you know, pretty much some of the best ballers on the team that I think had a legitimate shot of probably getting to the league if they, if they would have had a chance. Give it to them. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's cool, man. That's cool, man. But look, you, you made a lot of progress in your life, man. and. The one thing I can respect, brother, that nothing was given to you, right? You was a hard worker from the beginning, and you're still working hard. You're still giving people a chance to see you play and experience, you know, the world of biz, half man, half amazing, every chance you get. So I just want to say, man, brother, you know, keep doing what you're doing. I wanted to give you your flowers, man and make sure that we keep your name alive anywhere we can, you know, any chance we get. And Yeah, that's right. Not to cut you off, but I did want to say something about that, man. One thing I do want to say is we got we to gotta appreciate each other while we're here. That's right. We got to love the people after they're gone. You know, the times we're in right now, the situation in terms of how this country is being run, we have to let each other know that we are here for each other at any time we can be there. So instead of coming together after we lose somebody, yep. let's come together while everybody's still here. Yeah. You know, I just want to let you know I appreciate you for having me. I love you. It's been a minute since I've seen you. We both no got doubt, my brother. Man, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we still That's here, right. baby. That's right, man. Love you too, my brother. And, you know, we're going to chop it up again, man. Uh, when this whole pandemic is over, I want to have a reunion with all the guys to come down to the studio, and we have a big powwow, man, and do it the right way. Indeed. No question. No, no doubt. Here, baby, just let me know. No doubt. Got you, man. Salute. Uh, keep staying strong, Salute, and man. praise to you, man. All right? 
No doubt. Everybody be safe out there. Love to everybody out there. All the essential workers be safe. Protesters be safe. If you're going out there to do anything, please do it safely and with a sane mind. Shout out to basketball heads. Love y'all, baby. Love, that. Love you too, my brother. All right, one. Yeah, y'all got it here first. Y'all got it here first. My guy, half man, half amazing, Mr. Biz himself.